I work with a retired master sergeant, and after the flag display I made for her, she decided she wanted a shadow box. Well, the shadow box she wanted was huge and made with a CNC router. I said, I can make it by hand like any other do-it-yourselfer would, but I can't guarantee the final product. She said she saw my work and had complete confidence in my ability. So here's what I did. I wasn't sure how much wood I would need, so I started with two pieces of oak wood. One was 8 feet long by 6 inches wide, and the other was 4 feet long by 10 inches wide. I will add more if I need it. I cut each piece in half. This gave me two 4 foot by 6 inch pieces, and two 2 foot by 10 inch pieces. I decided to use the process I used to make the Air Force logo. With Rasturbator, I printed out a large pic of the Master Sergeant logo and used it as a template. If you missed my video showing how this is done, click below. I used the logo to eyeball the positions of the pieces. This ensured my logo would fit and there would be enough space in the display for her contents because she said there would be a lot. I didn't want too much space on the sides of the rank, so I made the box the width of the template by cutting off a half inch from each of the side boards. At this point, I picked the sides with the best grain to be my top side. Then I simply took out a sharpie and traced the logo directly onto the wood. I did both top and bottom pieces. Then with a straight edge, I simply connected the top to the bottom. As you can see, once I saw my side, I changed my mind and made my lines a little bit wider. As I say in every video, I make this up as I go along. As you have seen in other videos, I love overkill. It gives me a chance to use some of my cool tools. Here I grab some biscuits and place three on each board. The reason I drew my logo lines first was to ensure my biscuits would be well inside my cuts. I'm sure that this step is probably not needed, but I would throw a fit later when I'm putting clamps on the faceplate if this thing came apart. Once all my biscuit slots are cut, I turn the boards on end and apply my glue, ensuring that each slot gets glue in it. Before I place my biscuits in the slots, I smooth out the glue with my finger to ensure I cover all the side of the wood. With a hammer, I gently tap the biscuits in to ensure that they are all the way down. With all the biscuits in, I join the boards together ensuring my logo lines are perfectly matched. Ensure you attach the top middle piece to your faceplate before attaching the lower bottom side board or you will have to pull them back apart when you're trying to get the top center piece in place. After both sides are joined together, grab some clamps and squeeze the boards as tight as you can together. The more glue that comes out, the better. While doing this, ensure there is no bow in the faceplate. You can overcome this by placing your clamps on each side of the faceplate. While that is drying, I clean up the glue from my workbench. If you have a cutting mat protecting your bench, this should be easy. If not, check out this video. It shows you a quick tip on cutting one to fit your workbench. While the face plate is drying, I decided to start working on the logo stripes. Earlier I discussed the shadow box with the Master Sergeant, and I told her that I really did not like how fat the box was going to be, meaning if hung on a wall, it must be at least 7 inches off the wall, very unappealing to me. So I told her that I wanted to make this box as thin as possible to give it a very professional appearance. She said, do your thing. So to start, I wanted the Master Sergeant stripes to be a quarter of an inch thick. The picture I used as a reference had the stripes at least a half an inch thick. I started by cutting two 6 inch wide pieces at 21 and a half inches. Then I shaved off a quarter of an inch and cut in half to produce five quarter inch thin pieces. These I would glue together to give me a 15 inch by 21 and a half inch square. I am going to move through this process quickly as later I decided that these stripes would look fantastic if made out of mahogany, but the process that I used to create these stripes will be the same. I rig a contraption of scrap wood and clamps to keep the pieces from bowing up when I squeeze them together. I lay down a paper towel between the scrap wood and the stripes so that the glue that oozes out does not attach to the scrap wood. Trying to detach this from the scrap wood could easily break them. Later I can simply pull the paper towel off and if there is any paper left stuck to the stripes I can simply sand it off. While that is drying, I cut the excess wood from the top to make the faceplate more manageable on my workbench. 
Now I pull out my jigsaw and I cut along the lines, cutting out the faceplate. Don't worry about being too perfect since we will spend a lot of time sanding later. When you get to the center, start with a drill bit and drill out the corners. Ensure your bit is wide enough to fit the jigsaw blade. Then simply repeat the process of cutting out your center. After the faceplate is cut out, take out your sander and do a rough sand with 60 grit paper to ensure that there is nothing too glaring that your sander can't handle later and you can't recut with the jigsaw while you still have it out. Going back to your stripes, I take a belt sander and hit it really hard. Once it looks really level, then I take my orbital sander and I make it look like one whole piece. So now the stripes I cut out will be a lot less bulky and high. To begin this process, I go back to my template and with an X-Acto knife, I cut out the individual stripes from the template. This will allow me to push them closer together in order to conserve wood. Originally, I was going to use oak and just stain it darker, but after the Master Sergeant saw my Air Force logo video, she wanted mahogany stripes instead. So I purchased a six inch wide mahogany piece that had some beautiful grain. This time, I wanted to make the pieces a little wider, so I planned on using my bandsaw. Problem was, my bandsaw had a height limit of a little under five inches. So yes, I cut the boards to fit under the bandsaw and then I cut my quarter inch pieces for my stripes. This would actually save me wood as my bandsaw blade is thinner than my table saw blade. So using the same process as I did before with the oak, I just repeated the same process for the mahogany. Using my template pieces, I take a sharpie and outline the stripes onto the mahogany square just like I did with the oak. I start with the first and the largest stripe and see how it goes. Then I repeat the process and place all template pieces on the square to ensure I have enough space and I trace my perimeters. It doesn't matter how you arrange them, just as long as no outlines touch. Don't forget your top stripe. It would be a pain to start this process over again. I'm guessing when you get these shadow boxes professionally made, this process here is done with a CNC router. Okay, before we cut out the star, we want to cut out the hole in it first. Grab your hole saws and find a size that matches the center of your star. We will cut this out before we will cut out the rest of the star from the mahogany. Once your hole is cut, you're ready to cut out the rest of your star. Just cut in straight lines towards the center, and voila, you have a star. Now I'm going to run all the stripes and the star through the router to give them that nice, smooth, rounded appearance. I pick a really small router bit and quickly change out the bit to my router. Grabbing my router table, I throw it on the stand and get to work routing all the pieces that will make the Master Sergeant stripes. Before we begin routing, we want to ensure we only route the tops of each stripe. Take the time to lay out all your pieces onto the faceplate and put them in order. And then place a small X on each piece before you begin. Once you start each piece, make sure you don't see that X before you send it through the router. You want the bottoms of each to have a sharp edge so they look like they are attached to the faceplate and not floating. This is why we do not route both sides. So now all your pieces should have a slight rounded bevel look to them. We will still sand each piece later, so don't worry if you think it's not rounded enough. After laying out my pieces and taking a look at the logo, I was not really happy with the angular look on the faceplate above the top stripe. So I decided that I would make this more closely resemble the angle of the top stripe. And for the V-point, I decided to make this more rounded, so I grabbed my coffee mug and used the base of it to make a smooth transition at the bend. But this was really just a shameless plug to get my FSU Alamada in the video. After stepping back and taking a quick look though, I decided that it was still not rounded enough at the bend, so I grabbed a protractor and really flattened it out. But here, just use your own judgment. Once I thought the line looked good, I simply readjusted it with the jigsaw. 
I laid the stripes back down to see how they looked with the new cut of the faceplate. I think it's much better looking now. So with my orbital sander, I quickly hit all the edges of the faceplate. And with my detail sander, I ensure all the edges look round and even. At this point, take a good look at the faceplate and make sure all transitions are smoother or rounded, or hit them a little bit harder with the sanders. So now that all of the components of the faceplate are complete, it's time to start building the box that will go below it to house all of the Master Sergeant's shadows. Thanks for watching, and don't miss part two to see the conclusion of this box. As always, hit that subscribe button.